appropriate. <laughs> so appropriate. It is. So appropriate. We have a guest today, and we forgot to ask him to hide himself because we already. I don't think he's been ever formed. I don't yeah. know. That. But you know, still, just to have the. I'm not that big of a mystery anymore, am I? Uh, no. <laughs> You've been on the show. Means means he's comfortable here. You know. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's right. Welcome, Elliot. Hi, Elliot. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm very excited. I was as we, just before we hit record. I was I was just sort of saying that I uh, it's been a while since I've kind of done a little Zoomy podcast thing, and so it's great. I'm really excited. I'm just happy to just chill out on a Sunday and chat. Sunday being the recording day. Yes. Were you um Were you watching the rugby then? Is that why you were? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it, just it, like... it was kicking off at three o'clock. I was like, "That's just a perfect amount of time to still sneak it in." So this is the fun thing. I was like, "I've gotten distracted, but I'll be there in a minute." And you went, "The rugby," and I went, "Oh, that's cute." <laughs> 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 I think it's funny that you think I'm watching rugby. Hey, she, has, she has a new obsession now. Um, I'm making my way through Psych. Yes. Psych. 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 I have no idea what that is. He's a fake psychic detective. It's a whole thing. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. They make a lot of fun of the mentalists. It's a good time. Oh, that's why I love that show. Um, Katie, do you want to introduce our lovely podcast? Oh, yeah, that bit. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie. That's Lily Kay. And this is Elliot, also known as Hakuna Machado, who's been here before, but we love him here. So we welcome yes. back again. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, um... Do I ask? No, I'm going to ask. You know, this time we're going to leave it out again. The usual, what were you watching? Because, well, you, didn't, uh, you can ask Elliot what he's watching if he wants to go uh, through. That's, that's true. That's true. I can ask yeah. you, Elliot, because... Yeah, because uh, I know I had something prepped because I knew specifically you guys would be really excited. <gasps> yeah. I finally finished the other day Arcane. <gasps> oh, Ooh. I did see you tweet about it. Yeah, I saw it as yeah. well. Yeah. What did you think? What a show that that yeah, is. It's really good. Oh my gosh. But everything is good. Everything about yeah. it is just so good. Mm. Like it's not even just like a couple bits are good and no no everything is good. The characters, the animation, the story, the representation. I could go on like it's just nuts. Where did it's, that come from? It's so gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I think about it did like <laughs> so well. Like it kind of unexpectedly so we were just like let's just talk about arcane like i think we it was like a a last minute edition yeah, yeah, yeah. it was it. and it like it really did quite well for us. i need i need to go back and, and listen to that now that i finished the show so oh yeah I can, I catch up with you guys probably yeah, yeah I, I thought that you would <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> and i don't blame you podcast. i don't blame you <laughs> and neither is this episode no <laughs> it's not it's not gonna be spoiler free good who was your favorite character I oh, I don't know where to begin. For a, a lot of the show, it was Jinx. I just I, I mean just spectacular, and the voice acting from Ella Pennell in particular mm-hmm. was just nuts. I, how she did it, any of that is just astounded me. Uh, I liked the older Echo as well. I thought even yes. though he's only in it shortly, I really like what he did. Right. And uh, Victor as well. Yes, and, I'm. I'm quite fond Victor of Victor. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I thought uh, the entire time I thought Victor was going to turn out to be like evil, although he was going to have that kind of turn and in, go into like full sort of like mm. mad scientist thing. Mm. I was very glad that he didn't. I yeah. Don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Victor's great. I'm now afraid that he's going to die or something because <laughs> 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 this is the Tonight. opinion we voiced. And how it's going to happen? I think. I think more likely transform into something than die. Uh, yes, that's going. true. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna, if you want to spoil it for yourself, I guess you can just look into there is a League, League of yeah. Legends and then it's there, <laughs> yeah. because I did that and I was like, oh. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. I'll, I'll, I'll let, I'll let the show do the talking for me. Fair. That's that's yeah. completely fair. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh, okay, that I might as well. I'm just gonna say <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it now. We're doing it now. Yeah, we're in yeah. it now. Uh, I watched Uncharted, uh, which was oh. surprisingly. Very enjoyable. I'm not. I I wrote to Katie as well. Like I was very mm. surprised by it. I was. I am. <laughs> I wrote an article about it. It's coming out next week on Couch Soup. Catch it. Uh, promo. Um, <laughs> uh, the only thing is, and it's you know, it was the big thing for me because she's my one of my all-time favorite characters, mm. Chloe. Not good. I I was I wasn't happy 
with oh, how no. they did Chloe. So that's that's like my main point of criticism. Nothing against the actress; she's great, uh, but she's not Chloe. That's it's it, no, it's it just didn't work for me. Uh, other than that, very good. I was I was very surprised, nice. and and I think they did. Um, uh, they were very smart uh, to highlight in every promo that this is our take on the game and we're gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know and 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 with that in mind i was like okay i i can live with that <laughs> i can work with that <laughs> so yeah look out for that and i will also say that i finally finished house of ashes which is the third game in the dark pictures trilogy oh yeah <laughs> uh, the curator is remembering me. I'm very happy with that. I already said that once, but since then I couldn't. I didn't have the time to play with it. But now I finished it, and little little hope is still the best. But this one was just top notch as well. So if you need nice. a game for the weekend, I should get on those. Point. I saw like a, so three good. of them on sale, the like mm-hmm. bundle thing, you know, and and then I didn't <laughs> go for it. It's really good. My absolute Pokemon hype at the moment. Oh, it's okay. just <laughs> yeah. everybody seems to be. Yeah, Why so I've, I've just kind of, I I don't know. Well, it, it doesn't help there's that they re- well, there's a new Pokemon game. But just before they brought out a new Pokemon game, they updated and re-released Diamond and Pearl. Okay. Which originally came out oh, what about like around 2009, 2010. <laughs> uh, no, probably earlier than that. Mm, around then, anyway. Mm. Yeah, two, maybe 2008, 2009. I don't know. And, I, I've never, yeah. I don't play Pokemon like ever, but uh, I do seem to remember it was around that time anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so because then that that they had, it was Diamond I got originally, and that was the last Pokemon game I played. I figured out for over well over a decade because mm. uh, I didn't get 3ds and everything, so I kind of got caught behind. But yeah, so they re-released them, so I bought Pearl this time. I oh, know you're right; it was and right. 2006. Just, 2006. Damn. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I've just just finished the main story on Pearl, so and now Arceus Legends Arceus is out and. Uh, when I get paid from some acting jobs I've just finished, I will buy that then. So, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Nice. nice. Oh. We like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. other than the absolute no lifing of Psych I've been doing, I actually took a break from that yesterday to watch all of the Book of Boba Fett segue. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. Nice, nice segue. Well done. <laughs> And uh, I watched all that yesterday. I only yeah. got through one episode of Psych. I was very sad about it. <laughs> It's okay. You can watch it now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I've been watching it all day, so it's fine. Fair. Mm. Yeah, I figured. Um, all right. So let's get into the book of Boba Fett. And uh, we're going to start with Elliot. And Yo. I will ask you what are your thoughts on the whole of the series. Sure. And just go for it. And we're just going to shut up. <laughs> and I've got I've got a quick little kind of like joke lined up for this is mainly a visual gag so sorry to everyone listening oh on audio God, yes. but um, <laughs> much like Lily who the guys on video will see is very ready to talk specifically about Book of Boba Fett and what she's wearing and has set up I also am I've got my Book of Boba Fett t-shirt yes! on <laughs> <laughs> which everyone listening is, is a Mandalorian t-shirt uh, I have my tea ready as well Cute. And cry. before we hit record, great. you heard a silly little noise, and I too have. Look at that! No, he That's does. I need to put him onto on. Hang on, yes. and then we'll get some get some oh great noises. Yes, please. Oh, <gasps> oh God. my darling boy! Oh my God. <laughs> there it is. Wait, wait. Yeah. That's a little he, horrifying. He, he can't speak, but uh, yeah. wait, it's funny. I, I'm gonna answer. You oh, got a dancing pog. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Katie's now just kind of really questioning what she's got just herself like... into for this recording. But yes, oh, I love it. Oh, I need oh. that mug. I have it's a new great. obsession. Yeah. It was a Christmas present from a friend. So. Oh, that's so Beautiful. Nice. Um, yes. Yeah, no, let's get Book of Boba Fett serious now. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have to say, overall thoughts on it, that the first four episodes I really enjoyed. And I was really like, we're, we're exploring some new stuff, which is great. I think a lot of the present day stuff, and, and I think this kind of runs true with a lot of people, just wasn't quite developed enough in any sense of the word. And that's throughout all seven episodes. 
which was just such a shame because there was probably something really interesting there. I saw a really interesting tweet the other day. And I think that they had mo- modern day Boba and, 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 and current day Luke sort of meeting and Boba going, hang on a minute, can you just, can you come back to Tatooine and sort this power vacuum you've created by blowing up Jabber on his sail barge? And it was just, I was like, <laughs> do you know, that kind of, that kind of, like speak something true like there is the power vacuum and it just they didn't really develop that side of it you know they set up that there are all these different races controlling different areas of Tatooine Mm. but but we only ever saw them a handful of times and didn't really understand who they were and so on and so forth so it's a shame but that being said all that stuff about Boba from getting out of the Sarlacc pit to to sort of up to his time of meeting Fennec I thought was just really interesting to watch and seeing his relationship with the Tuscans and and something that I'll talk a bit more on later, I don't know as to how in-depth I'll go, but just really interesting how they they were bringing in Indigenous stuff into the show as well, you know, that I thought was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. And really that's, that stuff was what piqued my interest with this show, I think. Yeah. I, I think I agree with pretty much all of that, to be honest. Mm. Um, yeah, I found, and I said this to Lily yesterday uh, very briefly, oh. I finished the season and kind of went, all right, I guess that was fun, but also what was the point? Yeah. Because I, like, I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of, like, it, it didn't feel like it, it, by the time we got to that, that last episode in that last scene, I was like, this just felt like a setup for the next season of The Mandalorian more than it was anything to do with Boba Fett, considering yeah. the title of the show is The Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Um, and I agree, I agree, those first four episodes I thought were really interesting, specifically all the, the stuff that happened in the past and his relationship with the Tuscans, I thought actually was really nice. And I liked the way that all developed. And I liked yeah. um, uh, seeing that sort of culture play out uh for him and, and how he kind of created a new identity for himself through mm-hmm. that but i i mean to be fair and i've said this multiple times this is not my field i don't know that much about it i only know bits and pieces i mean you know I've, i i'm the most casual of viewers of these sorts mm-hmm. of things i don't really know very much about the lore around boba fett like some people do um so I don't know. It did feel like there was a bit of disconnect from the version of Boba Fett that I feel like I knew in my head, which was just a bounty hunter, to yeah. this version of Boba Fett, who seems to have absolutely no, um, just doesn't want anything to do with anything. Um, yeah. At this point, yeah. so I'm just sort of sitting there going, like, there, there are times in this show that I kind of go, it feels like the show is expecting me to know more than I need to, um, as a casual viewer, and that is quite isolating. And it's the thing I found with a lot of things that it's like Star Wars that have a lot of that has a lot of lore, and I understand that there's difficulty to it when you have an audience that expects not to be spoken down to. But I think speaking of Arcane, Arcane does that extraordinarily well in that it, it brings in people who had no clue about any of the the stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, and also lived up to the expectations of a lot of people who knew a lot of League lore. So it's like it's possible, but I, and I don't know if if the sort of version of Star Wars that they're creating at the moment is as accessible to yeah. filthy casuals like me. Yeah. Which, you know, I guess for some people it's not a bad thing, but it, it is a bit, you know, separated for me. Mm. Lily, <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> uh, I do agree. I think uh, I'm going to try and find the tweet that uh, uh, I heavily agree with uh i don't know who was the guy it was a guy who tweeted it but basically uh i think especially after episode six the title made a lot of sense why is it called the book of boba fan uh and and you know i i've been i am no longer fighting other star wars fans toxic <laughs> fandom very toxic uh, so I didn't tweet anything about it uh, but uh, I think he's right like you know a book is 
usually about more than just one person. And I think it, uh, they incorporated that very well. Uh, I don't know what was the um, exact example that the guy used in the tweet. I should have looked it up, <laughs> but I completely failed to do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, books introduce new characters or characters that we already know. And, and uh, uh, that's why uh, I didn't mind five and six at all. Like, you know, I was like, Mm. This this was great Star Wars, <laughs> and you know, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard just once again proved that she needs her own Star Wars project. I I think that's pretty clear since the Mandalorian, and uh, now with this episode, uh, uh, with the return of the Mandalorian, uh, I think she proved it again that she just has such a great sense uh, when it comes to Star Wars. Uh, and then uh, you know we got episode six from Dave Filoni, which was just. Star Wars orgy <laughs> and, and just I I was just purely joyed out by him mostly because <laughs> he came back and I missed my child because he's the best uh, of course that I, I know but you know it's not a flawless uh, series at all uh, I did have the question as well like you know what was the point other than setting up the Mandalorian season three? Uh, yeah. um, and also Boba Fett for me was always like a bit like, I didn't really understand why so many people liked him because he yeah. literally appears for like 10 minutes. 15? Yeah, pretty much. In, in, uh, pretty much. So I was like, yeah, he looked Pops cool. Up, and shoots some people, falls yeah, into a pit. Yes, yeah. And that was it. <laughs> and he looked cool and, and all that. But I was like, I, I don't get it. So I was like, you yeah. know, I, I, I watched, obviously, if you watch Clone Wars, and I think he's in Rebels as well, isn't he? He he appears in his... Mm, no? No. No, just the Clone Wars, right? Yeah, yeah, just Clone Wars, I think. Yeah. So if you watch that, like, you know, I, I started to like his story there and it started to be a bit more interesting for me but even when they announced it the only reason i knew that i'm gonna watch it is because it's star wars mm. that's it yeah uh, it, it's interesting like i i find it interesting this this talking point of it's the book of boba fett and books have multiple characters I personally don't think it, it it deployed it that well. Which and and episodes five and six, they for me they felt really out of place. Uh, maybe episode five not so much. Episode five I could maybe give a pass to because it felt like that storyline was going to move into um, the the storyline of of Boba Fett, but. When I look at the a book structure, my, an example I'll give is is the Game of Thrones books, in which you know they switch between mm -hmm. multiple characters. Like the chapters are named after the specific character, following similar to your book in yeah. Solus. And I think that oh. the thing, yeah, I've read it. No worries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you like the way I just dropped that, I was, yeah, see if I can nice. pass it, but we can't. <laughs> um, but I think that that when when Game of Thrones and, and, and yourself, when, when you move on to different characters, it still feels like it's all gunning towards the same the same story, gunning on the same track towards the same the same end. And just specifically with episode six and just that long time away with with Luke, Ahsoka and Grogu, I just I didn't I, I, I had no sense that we were watching a Boba Fett show at all. That's and and I do. and I feel I should still, even if you're going off to new characters. I should still have a sense that I'm that I'm watching a Boba Fett show. And so for me, what I would have wanted is if you're going to veer off to different characters, is you veer off to Fennec, who didn't get a sing who didn't get a single episode geared towards her. And she's she's the female lead. Yeah. You know? Uh have have an episode about Black Chrysanthemum, for God's sake. Why not? Mm -hmm. You know, because he's he's a character that the the Wookiee. The Wookie. He's right, a character you. that's <laughs> 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 puzzled, look, I got you. Um, because he was a character introduced in this that had affiliation to Boba Fett. Yeah, right. Whereas yeah. Luke, Luke and Ahsoka, Ahsoka in particular, has no affiliation. Grogu has no a, a, a slight affiliation, but but as far as Boba and Grogu's affiliation goes, it's Boba helped Mando to save Grogu, and then Grogu left. So why is Grogu in a Boba Fett Boba Fett show? You know? Yeah, it just. He's cute. 
Yeah, that's not a good enough narrative. It's not a good enough reason, you know. And and I don't and you, and and it also kind of goes back to the fact of I don't mind Grogu coming back, but maybe not till the end of season three of Mandalorian, you know, because we that 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 final episode of season two was just so heavy on he's going now. This is it. This is the end of their story together. And we're moving on to something else now. And I feel, I don't know. I don't know what Favreau and Filoni are working towards, but right now. It, is it feels hard. pretty confused. Yeah, I I will. I agree entirely. I was going to say something quite similar in that if when when you're reading a book, there is the idea, especially if it's called the book of Boba Fett, the idea should be everything, even within the narrative, should be relating back to the central point, which mm. should be Boba, considering that is the title of the show. And it it did feel like it just sort of. I didn't. I wasn't mad at the two episodes, the five and six. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> um, I wasn't mad at those episodes, but I felt like I was watching The Mandalorian. I wasn't yeah, watching yeah. the Book of Boba Fett at that point, and that is sort of like, mm, 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 mm. you know, it's like that. That doesn't it. That shouldn't be the feeling I get, and it kind of felt like they went, "Well, we're not really sure what to do with him now, so we'll just go back to Mando because clearly he's got more girl stuff going on. Um, we'll just sort of sort all that stuff out." Um, which was great. I very much enjoyed all of that stuff. I thought it was, you know, Pedro Pascal continues to be so incredibly watchable, even when you can't see his face. Yeah, yep. um, uh, And I thought their reunion at the end of episode seven was adorable, oh obviously. Um, oh, the way he just jumped out. Oh my God, him. no. <laughs> oh, my heart was like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it just didn't feel like it was the same show at that mm. point it, like it it, it it really veered off into a completely different area um yeah it's 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 just a shame it, it, but it also meant but by the end of like by the end of episode seven when everything's just sort of fine now and they're all just sort of standing in the street like haha look we did it gang and then they move away and it's just sort of like that's it the one, and there's, nothing, there's no more story threads here are we just leaving yeah. this now um yeah you know, yeah. and I, I don't disagree with you guys at all. Uh, like, obviously, we came here to watch Boba Fett and then yeah. Boba Fett disappeared <laughs> halfway Very through. Very ironic that um, I keep doing this. Um, I did really enjoy... Uh, his uh, story with the, the Tuscans and I was very upset by the fact that Fennec barely got any screen time. Yeah. Uh, I, I was like, you know, that's like my biggest problem with the whole thing because it was advertised with her as the female lead and I love Mingna. I was fortunate enough to meet her as well um, mm. uh, last year and, and, you know, I was looking forward to see her as Fennec Shen and, you know, obviously she appeared in the Bad Bad scenes and whatnot but, you know, this was live action and then she's just kind of mm. there and that's why I was first very upset uh, with the keep uh, having flashbacks to the past of how Boba got where he is now and I was like I want to see Fennec <laughs> you know I yeah. I was more interested in her to be honest uh, but uh, I really I really did enjoy uh, his storyline uh, in the first uh, four episodes and I think uh, the biggest problem is that maybe they should have gone with that as you know, just nothing from the present time and not this whole taking over Jabba's um, yeah. whole empire and whatnot. Because, uh, sure, it it is interesting and it I think it could have been done a lot better uh, with more time. Because this seven episodes, especially uh, with bringing in Mando and Luke and Grogu and everyone's story uh, as well, um, it, it just, you know, it was too much. Too much and and not enough time uh, to get into it properly. Uh... This is it, and, I, and I, but on on that, I kind of feel that they wasted the time that they did have because certainly once you got to episodes three and four, the flashbacks weren't necessarily needed as much. I think you know once you got to the point of him finding Fennec, you know we don't need to see him rescue his ship as well because we've already oh, seen yeah, him yeah. with it in Mandalorian. Yeah. So we as an audience have already accepted that he's got it. And that they're working together. We don't. I, for me, I didn't need to see how that, why you know, why that mm. came forward. It was the same in, um, in in the solo film, which is is which I really enjoyed. But there are just some moments in there. You're just like, 
I, I didn't need to find out how he got the name Han Solo and I didn't necessarily need to find out how he got his gun. I don't know. They, they, they seem to be really highlighting out Han Solo now has his gun and it was just like, okay. We get it. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, the, the only thing that really we needed to see in Solo was how Han and Chewie met, which was a really great scene, you know, in, term, in terms of, you know, knowing as to where he goes. But... And so I kind of feel that, that that was the same here, that in, yeah, particularly in episodes three and four, and then and then definitely in episode six, yes, they could have, if they'd had more episodes, but also they wasted the time with the episodes that they had. And that was that was just a real shame, really. And you could have developed, you could have taken the time to develop the present day stuff a hell of a lot more. Yeah. Mm. That being okay. said, I was surprised that um, when the, the, the Tuscan camp kind of got, how quickly that happened mm-hmm. um it, like it can in comparison yeah. like it, the, the whole the, all the timelines kind of felt a bit sort of like either too slow too fast not enough too much here it, it's like everything was a bit too stretched mm. in the wrong direction so when, when he came back and it was like oh the place is destroyed and everybody's dead and i went oh already <laughs> it feels like he hasn't been here for very long <laughs> yeah yes and i think i would actually like to dig into a little bit the stuff with um luke and Grogu on said mm. planet yes. because as much as we feel like it maybe doesn't belong in this show it was still quite an important moment for a little green friend here um I've seen a lot of people not entirely on board with the ultimatum that Luke gave Grogu ah, and yes. I think I have to agree in a lot of ways because after the episode I, I sat there and went I mean, he doesn't have to be upholding all of these, like, he's the only, he's kind of the only one left along with Ahsoka, so why is he still carrying on things as they were? And I, my favourite was somebody pointed out that it's like, it was Luke's connection to his father that meant that that he could have a redemption before he died. Mm-hmm. And now he's, like, still touting this sense of, like, you have to give up all emotional, familial, and, like, friendship connections in order to be able to go down this path. It's like, I mean... You don't, though, and you already proved that, so that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. The whole thing, it did feel a bit weird to me. Uh, I've got to, I've got to mm. admit. Well, I think that maybe, I, yeah, maybe that's what then, you know, leads Luke into the path that that ends up to where we're finding him in, in The Last mm. Jedi, and yeah. that, you know, because it's correct, you know, his, his, his emotion is what saved Vader, saved yeah. Anakin, but then he still followed the original teachings of the Jedi. And so once we meet him in Last Jedi, he's like, I fucked up and it has to be done differently. And Yoda, you know, Yoda then appears and says, you know, they they have to move on to what, you know, to, to be better. And and I think that kind of, you know, and then it's, it's kind of what scares Rey a bit in Rise of Skywalker as well, because, you know, tapping into her emotions and into the dark side of the force and, thinking that she's killed Chewie and so on and so forth. And, but then, yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a good point that person's made actually. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think mm-hmm. it only okay. further fuels um, in, into justifying where Luke is at in The Last Jedi. Yeah. yeah. True. I, I think I can understand that. Yeah. I did see that the, the disparity between this version of Luke that we were seeing is kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. new, the actual Jedi Master Luke mm. um, to the version of Luke that we see in The Last Jedi was like, there are leagues of difference there, which I guess makes yeah. sense because there's a lot of time between the two things. Um, but I, I did, I don't know. It, it, it just was one of those things that I was like... <laughs> <laughs> For a first show, I, I don't think too deeply about it. It was one of the things that kind of made me go, well, I don't know if I agree with how that went down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it made in as Elliot said it as well. It made sense uh, in regards of what's happening in the Last Jedi with Luke, and uh, you know what he did uh, to Ben, uh, and uh, you know I I I didn't have a problem with it. Someone said that you know um, quoted that uh, uh, famous line from Revenge of the Sith uh, of only Sith uh, deals in absolutes. And, you know, I was like, yeah, that's something that Luke, I don't think, ever heard <laughs> in his life. So it's like, no. you know, it's an it's an argument where I'm like, yeah, sure. But, you know, he's, he's following the old ways and uh, it, it makes sense yeah. to his character uh, at the end of the day. Um, so I didn't mind that. 
what I did, and and this is gonna be like you know weird for me to say because I love that Grogu went back to Mondo uh, and whatnot, but at the same time, I I kind of wish that it didn't. <laughs> like, well, this I, is the thing; it feels like there should have been a both. Uh, yes, <laughs> I yeah. think that's the well, trouble. I, it feels yeah. like there should have been a both for him. Yeah. Well, I think well, I, but I think there still is, and there's, yeah. there's 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 the wild theory around that Grogu is going to become the, oh, the yes. true owner of the dark saber. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> and and be, you know because the the dark saber was originally made by a Mandalorian yeah. Jedi and so is Grogu going to follow that path and be be the the second Mandalorian Jedi? Which um, would be fun. To be he ever develop speech? These are the questions we have to. Ask. <laughs> <laughs> well, he will develop speech. He's just a baby still. Come he's on, he's like fifty. <laughs> yeah, well, just yeah, a baby. But he's thing. A baby. Yoda was nine hundred when he yeah. died. So mm. time is different <laughs> for them. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Uh, the, Luke I, says that Luke says to him, "Time is different for him." Yeah, and that you know these connections will only be fleeting. For you know, they'll they'll be they'll be lifetime connections for people like Mando, but mm -hmm. in the end, fleeting yeah. connections for Grogu. Yeah, exactly. Nonetheless, uh, important. <laughs> you <will> understand. <laughs> uh, um, uh, there was a very funny comic uh, going around on on Twitter where uh, Luke is telling Grogu that you know I I I knew this master Yoda and uh, he was mm. talking in this in this funny way and and Grogu is thinking that but I I talk normally <laughs> like you know I'm gonna talk normally you know not, <laughs> you not all talk the same way <laughs> as Master Yoda did and I was like yeah I wonder how would that look if you know we got so used to Yoda being the way he is and then Grogu mm. starts talking and it's just completely normal. <laughs> <laughs> it would be weird. I, I, kept, I kept trying to remember exactly how the, the 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 there is no try, there is only do quote goes. Do or like, do not. Do or do, do, or or do, do not, not. There is no, no try. try. That's what yeah. I, that's what I thought it was. But I was sitting there going, oh, I can couldn't figure out the wording of it specifically, and it was kind of frustrating me. And I apparently just couldn't be bothered to Google it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Yeah, yeah. I did find that whole sequence where he he put him in his little backpack and and ran around. Oh, I was like, ah, oh, look, we're doing it again. Yes. That was, oh. as yeah, I said, that I was, can't, uh, yeah. I was like, this is cute. I mean, I don't think it's necessary, but this is like <gasps> obvious fan service. I, I thought it was it. wholly unnecessary. I can't lie. Again, we're wasting time when we could do, be developing new stories, but hey, ho, hum. It's happened now. What are we going to do? Nothing. I, I, I think uh, what they are doing, because we know that there are multiple uh, other Star Wars TV shows coming out. Uh, and I think the reason why they did this the way they decided to do it is because everything is going to get connected uh, at one point or another. Mm. Uh, and, you know, it's it's later going to become important uh, uh, to different stories as well that we got to see these perspectives. Yeah, um, yeah. So but it, it, it is, but, you know, and, it, and I kind of agree with Katie that that does become a bit of an issue for, for the casual fan because... You know, one of the things that made Mando season two work is if you had knowledge of who Bo Katan was, mm. who Ahsoka was, who Boba Fett was, like they had, and Luke, like they had four legacy characters enter into that show. Yeah. Ahsoka comes in, drops the name Grand Admiral Thrawn. Yeah. Uh, for the casual viewer, you're going to be like, what the fuck does any of this really mean? I have no and, idea yeah. what that means. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, you know, for me, who's who's watched Star Wars Rebels, where where Thrawn is currently in canon in, in Star Wars, I was just like, oh my God, we're doing this. Okay, because it's one of the unanswered questions for Star Wars Rebels is uh, is where Thrawn is, and yeah. in particular, the lead character from Rebels, Ezra. So, yeah. um, which is, it's wildly believed that's where the Ahsoka show is going to go down. So... Mm. But you know, it's 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 maddening. Like, how how is anyone gonna? <laughs> how can anyone casual keep up with all of this? It's just... I I think we are long beyond the point that that matters. Uh, I mean, I think... it matters to me. Yeah, it matters. <laughs> it matters because 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 you'll lose viewership if people exactly. can't follow along. Too. I mean, yeah, that's true. But at the same time, Star Wars been around since the seventies, so you know, and. Yeah, no, like, it has. you shouldn't it be, it be um, putting in stuff and expecting everybody to go like, oh, you okay? We're going to do this show, but you have to make sure you've watched this, 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 and this before you can understand everything that's going on. Like that is so. It, it just if it, 
as somebody who they part I mean it's part of the reason I think I, I never quite got into Star Wars because I, I find it really difficult to get into something that has a lot of law and expects you to kind of know things in order to under like enjoy things at, to its fullest that's why I, I never really got into a lot of like fantasy stuff I think I've mentioned before is a big reason I think I, I've never quite taken the deep dive into like Lord of the Rings because Lord of the Rings feels like one of those things where it's like, here's all of this law. We've literally got a whole book of just like names just and law, dates yeah. <laughs> and law in it. And like this way, you can understand everything that's going on. It's like, I don't know. Mm. bother with that. I, can't. I just want to yeah. enjoy like a, like a proper little story where I can understand who this character is, what the story, the journey they're going on is, and then maybe pick up additional details on, on the way. And then go deeper if I want to. The main arc of the story should still be the emotional arc as opposed to the law based one, I, th I think. And I think that's the trouble that Star Wars keeps getting itself into is that it keeps going, okay, but also we're gonna put this little bit in, we're gonna put this little bit in. And then it's, it gets to the point where it's suddenly like, okay, but now I'm actually being left out of the story because I don't actually know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, when you when it comes to Lord of the Rings, uh, the thing that you mentioned is literally books that you know you can choose to read or not. I read I mean, all of Tolkien, uh, so you know. But I watched. Uh, first... it, that's more of an example. I think it's not the same. It's not exactly the same. It's just the part of the like. Uh, it's more my example of like, in the way that people talk about it. Like, but I think the more I think it's going to be more an issue with the the Rings of Power series, if anything. Because that feels like a show that's going to be Absolutely. built off yeah. of people who have a long time, like love of the universe and all of the the, the stories behind the stories. That it may, I think, it, it has the potential to be a bit isolating in that fact as well. I think obviously the Lord of the Rings movies were the first um, uh, example, or people, the first version of the Lord of the Rings that a lot of people saw when they came. Yeah. Out. So that's like yeah. that's like it's like a slightly different thing. But this now has. As you mentioned, it's been on. They, there's been stories built on it since the 70s, and it, it really is just sort of like, because you've seen all of it, and I'm like, okay, I've been mean, technically seen a lot of it, but I hadn't seen the animated series, and it realized that was going to have to be an issue thing. I'm like, yeah. how interested I am in that. But and, and here's the thing as well. It's like you know, with with that first season of Bad Batch, it, it certainly looks like the second season of Bad Batch is going to be is even from there setting up potential sequel trilogy stuff as well. You know. Um, there's there's the rumor mill of that, and and you're just like even from from there when technically that's set before a new hope, and it's mm. it's kind of like, but now there are going to be strands from that that are going to be more important for fifty years down the timeline, and it's just kind of like, oh, I can I can I can I can really I really do empathize with with, with casual viewers because um, it's nuts. It's that there was. There was something really interesting. There was a real funny joke that went around Twitter the other day with someone going, right, um, Boba Fett, bo uh, Book of Boba Fett season two, um, Jabba the Hutt's going to return, and it had a picture of Ezra Bridger. Now, if you've seen Rebels, you'll get that joke straight away. Mm. The joke being that in Star Wars Rebels, Ezra um, uses Jabba as a code name, so in case he ever gets captured. Loads of people in the replies were like, no, Jabba blew up in a sail barge. They can't bring him back as well. Wait, isn't that a picture of Ezra Bridger? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but, mm. you know, these are people that haven't watched Rebels. So it's, 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 and that's just a small joke. Do you know what I mean? That, that the people that have watched Rebels go, <laughs> very good. Um, some people in the replies going, no, hang on a minute. Isn't that Lando Calrissian? Again, another name he uses as, as a code name. And, you know, so, but, Casual jokes like that are fine, but whole TV shows and and the supposed Mandoverse we're getting, it mm -hmm. kind of slightly makes me. I'm kind of slightly glad that that and you know it's unfortunate for the people that were that were developing it, but that Rangers of the Republic got axed due to due to Gina Carano. But mm. it's just you know, but that was going to be another you know it was going to then be four shows in this Mandoverse set in this very small yeah, bit yeah, of yeah. the timeline and. But it's gonna. But you have to know people from from the twenty years ago in the timeline to understand what. And then you need to make sure you understand from people thirty years down the timeline. And it, ugh, yeah, gosh, what a headache! <laughs> what a headache! I don't know. I I don't think I agree with this. To be honest, I'm like I'm sitting here. But, yeah, sure, obviously. Yeah, but I'm we've watched them. it all. So, but we've watched it all. So it makes sense to us. Yeah, but you know, it's. I think it's everyone. Like you don't have to. 
There's never have to watch this and that. You know, if you want to understand it, sure, go ahead and watch it. I mean, to be honest with you, that's what I did uh, with Clone Wars because originally I didn't watch it at all. Mm. Uh, I only joined in after season six was long out and uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, I, I should probably watch this one as well because, you know, it's 2020. We are in lockdown. So why the fuck not? <laughs> so that was my own, and and I'm a Star Wars nerd. You know me. Like yeah, you know, I love Star Wars, but I mm. didn't watch Clone Wars. It was a pure decision that you know. Oh, okay, yeah. And now, obviously, when I see Cad Bane uh, coming on my screen live action for the first time, I'm like, ah. But at the same time, my brother uh, obviously watched the book of Boba Fett and he never saw uh, Clone Wars uh, or any mm-hmm. of the animated ones. And he was like, oh yeah, that too was, was great. Maybe I should start watching Clone Wars. He won't. Yeah, Don't yeah. get me wrong. He won't. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I, I was, he was like, uh, you know, I explained it to him and he, he read about it because you, know, you can do that as well. Just go on the internet and read who that was. Uh, and you know, if he wants, he can start watching it. Yeah, but 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 just finding out who Cad Bane was only the surface level of that, you know. He's they're, the blue they're all that, with the big yeah, 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 yeah. But all that, all the chat between Cad and Boba in the final episode. Oh yeah, that's it, it only it only yeah. it only has weight if you've watched Clone. <laughs> no Wars, idea what yeah. they were talking about. And 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 the thing is, is that and 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 that that the last time they saw each other was in a Clone Wars story that never went to air. So, you know, so it's again, it's and and. I only know that because because I, I follow it, and so I've gone and I've I've seen these different storylines and different things that they they never made to air. You know, the whole season six of Clone Wars Lost Missions are these stories that they had got that they had finished and were ready to air. Yeah. But Disney Disney axed them, you know, when yeah, they yeah. when they took over. So, um, but yeah, like all, all the all the all that chat. But you know, whereas if if they had brought Cad Bane earlier on in the in the in the show mm. and they'd had one meet halfway through the show and then their second meet is at the end there, it would have carried a bit more weight because you've developed it within the show and yeah. not relied on stuff that's happened I w- in Clone yeah. Wars years ago. Yeah. I will say ago. his introduction into the show when they like showed his eyes, I went, oh, that's spooky. I didn't realise until like way later when he was like having meaningful conversations that like, clearly had like more history behind them, that this is a mm. character that had popped up before because in my head yeah. i was just like this guy's got creepy <laughs> <laughs> <He does. laughs> but also and then and then also it kind of feeds in if they brought him in earlier and it feeds back to my point earlier on 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 saying that fennec you know didn't have enough time mm. because they faced off against each other in the bad batch yeah but we never we never got a, a reunion between them as well yeah yeah, yeah. yeah again katie's like what, what? I didn't <laughs> exactly know that. you know cool. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> and and you know and and we could have used more flashback time to develop that, you know, to develop that relationship between Cad and Boba because Cad talks about Django. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really shocked we did not see Tamura as Django in this, in mm. some kind of flashback. Yeah, 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 and yeah. you know, what I mean, I was, I yeah. was, I was, I was somewhat going in, banking on that we. You know, once, once flashbacks of, have been established, yeah, they I kind, was kind of referenced of, it a little bit. They, like, yeah. Yeah. You're watching the ship um, take yes. off from yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Kamino. Yeah. Camino. Camino. Okay. I... <laughs> it's okay, Katie. <laughs> we got we're, we're the encyclopedias, don't yeah. worry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I because I, there's like there's bits and pieces that I remember because I haven't seen a lot of these movies. I haven't seen the, yeah, yeah. the prequels in a very long time. I mean yeah. they were the ones that I watched alone in childhood, but like I haven't seen them in well over a decade at this point. Mm. Um but I, I remember them mostly from playing like the Lego Star Wars games and <laughs> those kinds of things, and then the kind of the stuff that, that Harry used to play. Um, Harry's my older brother, yeah. um, who was very big into Star Wars. He, he's kind of the Star Wars guy more than anybody else. Um, yeah, so it, it was it was an interesting. Yeah, I mean, him it, the face off between him and the elephant's character, whose name I can never fucking remember, the Marshal. Oh, yeah um uh if yeah there was a lot of him in that show where i was kind of like i feel like i'm missing something here but i have no idea what it is i guess he's very important in a way that i just don't understand and it's like i feel like i wouldn't be mad if they did a little like i know that there's a there's a real sort of there's kind of an allergic reaction to exposition in anything People don't like to be mm-hmm. have like obviously we don't want heavy exposition where we go let me just explain everything that's just gone on because like that's not good writing 
but there is a way to do exposition in a way that in you know involves people who don't know what's going on and still yeah. you know feels like yeah. somebody being filled in you don't need to go in and be like and this man is <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, 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 I think it, 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 just on the point of exposition, for me, if uh, I don't know if you guys have watched the show, but for anyone that wants to see what I personally think is the best form of exposition I've ever seen, um, the show This Is Us. Yes. Everything. Think, yeah. Everything is show, not tell. Everything yeah. is show, not tell. Yeah. And everything that the characters are learning present day, it shows sure, us that they sure, learned yeah, it yeah. in yeah. the past. And yeah. I mean, I'm only on season one currently, but you know, it's it's. It's it's just that for me, I, I've not seen any exposition ever done any better because yeah, yeah, they yeah. never explain everything. They just show you it all. And it's, exactly. it's just perfect. There is yeah. nothing wrong with exposition. It just needs to be done there isn't. properly. There isn't. Yeah, and I think yeah. that there is, a, there is a feeling that people, that obviously people don't want to be talked down to, but like, it, um, I think that there is a sense of like fear, I guess, in some writers' rooms where they like, we're really worried about, you know, expositing too much to our, uh, our audience so we're just going to completely mm. cut off any kind of like backstory and it's like no you then you're just cutting your audience off entirely yeah, yeah, yeah. um i think actually funnily enough the witcher has that problem as well because it does the same thing at, at times where it 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 holds so much back that sometimes you're like i actually don't know what's going on and it's a bit mm. confusing at this point um so i think just just opening up the the gates a little yeah. bit more yeah but again like again arcane's a, a perfect example like mm -hmm. it i mean it Re I mean, it rarely used exposition. It did at times, but mm. you know, like there's there's a time jump between episode three and four. Yes. And it doesn't sit there and explain what happened in that time. It goes, no, this is where we're at now, and that's yeah. it. And this is where the story continues from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Alas, she says. <laughs> um, I, to be fair, I, altogether, I really did enjoy it. Like you know, oh, yeah. as yes. as a as yeah. a Star Wars fan, it was pure joy uh from beginning to end i'm not gonna lie like yeah i saw the problems with it uh obviously i'm not blind to it but at the same time the star wars fan in me especially at episode six was like ah! and you know it was it was a very happy lily <laughs> over here <laughs> so, uh i saw you know my child is back and and that's like the, the thing yeah how can, yeah. you, how can you not love him? He's... My yeah, uh, my big question really is be, right now: where yes. do we go from here? Because I don't see where we go from here yeah. with Boba. I see where we go from here with the Mandalorian, because clearly he's yeah, got yeah, yeah. some more stuff to do. I very much was. I was so glad that the marshal wasn't like the yes. that they in that face off. I was like, they didn't actually just kill him because yeah. that's too many yeah. often. I don't <laughs> want that to happen. <laughs> so when oh. they did that little after credits bit where they showed him in the um the the tank, I was like, oh thank God. Okay, yes. yeah. all right. <laughs> So Although I, I would I would say that for a second I was like, I'm sure he's not gonna save Cad Bane, like that would be like like and I'm I'm hoping that's all happening and then and then they showed him and I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was yeah, a bit yeah. afraid that it's it's good. Don't get me wrong, I I think Cad Bane is a fantastic character and I wish, uh, well maybe we will, uh, but I wish we would see more of him. As, as a I think, I think, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think that he's dead because he had that little bleepy thing on his chest Fair. still, yeah, still bleeping. I yeah. don't know if it's a life monitor and it was still bleeping, but maybe. It, oh, yeah, but, it took me to that last episode when they had they were doing. There was a lot of um, proper like Western showdowns in this yes. show, which I did think yeah. was very funny, yeah. very and fun. very entertaining. Yeah, um, but like it wasn't until they did kind of like a close up on him, I was like, oh, he's wearing a fucking empire. <laughs> mm. <laughs> didn't clock that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, real bad guy. Got it. Yes. I understand yeah, yeah, yeah. all of these things yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean to frame it more in the Clone Wars, if ever they needed a bounty hunter storyline, it was mm. Cad Bane. It was Cad Bane, yeah. Which is why he's he was I I, I, I thought it was it was magnificent to bring him into the show. Oh, yes. Just he just needed to be brought yeah. in earlier. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He's he was the right choice of character to bring mm -hmm. in. Uh more so than than Luke and Ahsoka for this particular show. Yeah, I reckon. It, I think it would have been nicer to be able to see more, sort of like what's going on with him, yeah. and so that yeah. we had is like like myself who who hasn't has yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the first time I'm really seeing him to get a better understanding of who he is within the world. He doesn't need to even. I don't even necessarily need to need, even need to know. Jesus Christ, I'm having a stroke. <laughs> you can um, do it. <laughs> Please don't. I don't necessarily need even. Fuck me. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're gonna I'm get there. Gonna this <laughs> I don't necessarily even need to know all of his backstory. I just need to get a better sense of who he is. Who he is, yeah. In yeah, relation yeah. to like antagonist like is he like a major antagonist force is he just doing things for his own gain is he straight up evil all that so these are the, the questions that just need to be answered um within the context yeah. of, of yeah. the thing but yeah 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 it's all it's all in clone wars it is it's all in seven seasons of clone oh, wars. christ <laughs> yeah, it is i'm well, not gonna lie to you i'm never going to do so. that <laughs> that's you know and, and that's what i said that's my brother as well like you know he's he's he gets interested because he sees something in these shows because obviously he's watching these ones. And then I tell him that, you know, you can actually watch Clone Wars or Rebels and it's, it's there. And he's like, yeah, is... I might. And then he, he just doesn't. And he doesn't care, it... to be fair. Like, you know, and I, I feel... think I think I think, yeah, I think Rebels it would be a, is a really important one to watch yeah. for the Ahsoka TV show. Oh, uh, you, all, all, the, all of us. So all of the Ahsoka context will be from Rebels. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting for me to go into it without having seen it and see how much I get from it without having seen it. <laughs> yeah. Just as a, like a complete yeah. curiosity sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know what's going on. See if 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 I can actually go into it yeah. without knowing anything about these animated series. What would be nice is that the two episodes of Boba Fett and Ahsoka, you'll be you'll you'll really understand completely um, when they veer off halfway through the series <laughs> to a different story. So. And then they just go straight back to the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, but uh, wait, the, the next one is Kenobi, right? Kenobi. It is going to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite excited for that one. I'm so excited yeah. for them. Yeah. Like I said, that's kind of more in my era of like Star Wars stuff. I really yeah, grew up yeah, on. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I watched all of the all of the Star Wars movies, but the ones I grew up on. But like yeah. um, the prequels yeah. were obviously coming out throughout my childhood, so they were the ones that mm. I had. Uh, uh, well, and I think what's interesting about Kenobi is it's a different showrunner from Boba Fett and, yeah. and Mandalorian. So, um, yeah, it's Deborah Chow. So it will be, you know, it will mean that we're going to get someone else's Boy. taste of Star Wars, which is, which is oh, I feel they should be doing anyway. You know, it's, yeah. she's going to direct so all glad, the Well, I'm glad that they well. are anyway. Oh, she's directing all the episodes. Her. Yeah, is she? Yeah, damn. Yeah, go on, girl. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I'm, okay. and I'm, I'm just glad that Ewan and Hayden are going to be back. I'm not gonna yeah. very excited like, to see I'm, that. I'm just very yeah. excited to see that. Like, you know, I think you, Magogor, is, is such a good choice. Was such a good choice for Kenobi as well. So I'm like, do we know where this is taking place? What the actual story of it is? It's um, his isolation on Tatooine, yeah. looking after Luke, looking over Luke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, they've cast um, Joel Edgerton. Um, as Uncle Owen again because yeah. he was Uncle Owen in Revenge of the Sith yeah. okay. and the same actress uh, who played Aunt Beru what's her name um, can't remember off the top of my head um, I'm going to Google it because I don't like to leave people on me <laughs> wasn't it Rose Brian? I honestly wasn't no sure. no no no. she was a handmaiden oh yeah yeah, 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 I, yeah, I've, yeah I've not actually done any real looking into of what the, the Kenobi stuff is other one other than you know you remember Breakers back uh, and so is Hayden Christians and ten, all that sort of stuff. Ten years after the Revenge of the Sin. Okay. It's uh I don't know how you pronounce her surname. Bonnie Peace P S P I E S S E. Yeah, I don't know. No, I really don't know. Bonnie, Bonnie PS. <laughs> Bonnie Peace. Anyone in the comments Wait, let us know. Just let us know. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> Please spell it out phonetically so we can <laughs> we know how it is. And yeah. it, it will have uh, Kumail Nanjiani in it, so I'm like, oh, yeah, and in Dear Avama as well. Which yeah, I'm so excited. so you know, it's it's, it's a great, great cast. I'm like, mm -hmm. can't <laughs> wait to see this uh, coming out May the 25th, not May the 4th. Uh, yeah, they've got. Um, I'm just trying to think of what Disney's uh, current release schedule is like because I think I think the next thing they're planning on doing weekly is. Moon, Moon Knight, Knight? Yep. yeah, Moon Knight, and that's yeah, not yeah. until March. Yeah, so we've got so a couple got... of weeks quiet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, because they've got in March they've got both Moon Knight and Turning Red, the yes. Pixar film. Yep. Oh yep, yes. Yep. Turning <laughs> oh, Red like... is coming down. When is it? Uh, is Doctor Strange in May? Uh, I think it might have been pushed. Oh, no. was that pushed from March to May? Uh, I I think it was pushed. From yeah, March I think it's May. To May. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's around my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's somewhere there. Yeah. I still uh, haven't seen the first Doctor Strange movie. Oh my god, Katie. <laughs> Let's not get into this again. <laughs> Do you watch anything? <laughs> no. 
she's watching Psych and uh, I'm only watching Psych currently <laughs> and the West Wing. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's very fun. They did do a massive West Wing joke just in the episode I watched today. Very good. Because it's got Dulé Hill in it who played Charlie in the West Wing. And they, it, it was just him walking along and being like, I mean, I could have ended up in the White House. And I'm like, I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good show. There's, there's a lot of those kind of silly jokes in there. It's it's very, it's somebody called it a, a TV show for people who like watching TV shows. And I'm like, ah, so it was made for me. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> It was. It was. So many references. I I really should watch more. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I find it really hard to go just like step into like short things that are just like one offs. Apparently, we're running out of time on our thing again. It's okay. Yeah. We're, we're at the end. Though, we're anyway, so it's, it's good. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's a good show. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm it is. going to be very sad when I finish it all. But then I've got three movies to watch afterwards. Oh great. yeah, that's right. It has three movies. I'll. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I think we discussed everything that needed to be yeah, discussed about Boba Fan and the Mandalorian season three. Um, <laughs> at some point, at some. Point. I mean, we've already seen the like what the first two episodes. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Yeah, in, in, yeah. Well, apparently, it it is kind of confirmed that it's coming in December. So you know, it, as early as then, I was I didn't think it would be till next year. Because they've also right. got. Andor and Bad Batch Andor, season two. Yeah. Bad yes. Batch season two is already this year. Yeah, I know. It's like, oh god. It's look. Last year was Marvel heaven. This year is yeah, also yeah, Marvel yeah. heaven. Oh. But it's also gonna be Star Wars heaven. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm like very excited and <laughs> Jurassic World as well. I'm like, I cried. Dude, that trailer. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I cried when Ellen showed up. I was like. <laughs> <it's Ellen> <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna cry in the cinema. I'm not gonna see the movie because I'm gonna be like. Ah. Go away. <laughs> I enjoyed the trailer. I think the thing I enjoyed most about that trailer was just the um the raptor with feathers. Yes. I was like, yeah, nice. that's the pirate like raptor. That. That's a good. That's a good detail. I'm mm. very appreciative of that. I'm not a dinosaur person, but that did make me smile. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna be very exciting. I, I honestly can't wait. Uh, but yeah, it's it's gonna be. I believe that it's gonna be a very good year, in terms of movies and tv content. well at least yeah. franchises content. and franchises yes. obviously oh, it's, it's such a franchise year though as it well. is it's just crazy it is it is we it, oh but we like that I, I like that but hey next week is the last three episodes of the legend of vox Machina. i'm gonna <laughs> watch it don't worry about it okay <laughs> <laughs> now i now i get to be in the one who goes i know everything <laughs> yes that's correct uh also before we leave I have a very important question to Elliot. Okay. Yes, it's very important. It's oh, not no. going to be a joke, Katie. Don't oh, okay. hold your fine. head. <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> the question is, who do you think is going to win the Oscar for Best Picture this year? Oh, we're going back to this. Yes. Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I've not seen it yet, but I, I will assume, considering it's the front runner, Power of the Dog will probably win. But... Uh, I mean, I want it to be King Richard because that yep. was my favourite film of last oh year. God, yes. But then I've also, I realised I've really not seen any of the Best Picture nominees. And the only other two that I have, yes. June and West Side Story, I didn't really like either of them. So, yeah, I'm kind of stuck in a bit of a... Hmm, I, don't know. I said to Lily when we were talking about this last week that um, I think that uh, because the Oscar, the Best Picture Oscar tends to be a kind, sometimes kind of an upset or at least like, not what you expect yeah. it to be. I have a feeling that King Richard might take uh, it. Yeah. I don't know that it'll be because uh, there was the Japanese film Drive My Car. Did that Drive my there car. is that yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 everything I've movie heard movie. about that sounds it's like incredible. It yeah. sounds like it. Yeah, it, it 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 almost sounds like it's impossible. It wouldn't win, but just knowing how award shows go, sometimes I just it wouldn't surprise me if it ended up being Power of the Dog. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'm still going. I'm, I I think I changed my mind because I watched King Richard again, and I was mm. like, oh, "This is just such a fucking good movie." Like, so I good. I think that Will Smith definitely has to win. Like, I will be very upset if he doesn't win. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> this was this was literally the first time I hated him. I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god, this man is so frustrating." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see, I loved it. He just, he just said so it how good. it was. <laughs> said it so how it was. good. Oh, my God. Such a good movie. And, and his performance. Well, everyone's performance in that was like beautiful. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm hoping. 
I still have to once dry my car. That's that's the other thing I really I would want like to, see. to see that. But I I can't find it. It's definitely not going to come here in Hungary. So. I'm aware that he probably won't, but we all know that I'm still holding out hope oh, that Andrew. maybe Andrew Carlson yeah, will yeah, take yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, <laughs> he was so Andrew. good. He was really. He was good. brilliant. He was, he was brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was my last question. And uh, right. um, before we go, don't <laughs> forget to subscribe to Elias' channel which is Hakuna Machato. And, uh, you know, he, he talks about diversity in uh, film and TV. And uh, he always has such good videos. So just go ahead and fucking subscribe. Also, yeah, so he's a nice guy. We like Elliot. Yes. Oh, thanks. We love Elliot. Thanks. I don't know how I've charmed you guys into thinking I'm a nice guy, but there we are. We've done it. <laughs> <laughs> you fooled us. <laughs> but, uh, yes, so go and check out his channel, as we always say, and please do. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, don't forget to subscribe to us as well, I guess. Yeah, God, make sure you Smash do that. Smash that like button. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. <laughs> I, have, I have no enthusiasm for this bit. <laughs> uh, just whisper, in, just nice. whisper just, here. Just, it's so fun. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make sure that I don't explode the microphone with my voice. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, so yeah, that was us talking about the book of Boba Fett. Hopefully, Elliot will be back for another round for something. And uh, until Some then, we love you all. Not me. Yeah. I did the same thing as Lily. I, oh yeah, I needed it. I needed my own I'm thing. Gonna uh, this. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Great. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. It's a bit extra. <laughs> yeah. <Bye. laughs>